The debate that is splitting the Wisconsin fan base. Should Gray Guard be in or out of this team? What's the right way forward for the future of this program? McIntosh may have already decided, but what about the fans? And as always, my answer. Right. And as always, <laughs> more football news. Welcome to the Bucky Report, your destination for all things Wisconsin Badgers. Authentic takes. Oh, my God. Game analysis. Touchdown, Badgers. Ring one up. And discussion from the fan perspective. Woo-hoo! Thanks for joining us. And on Wisconsin. Welcome into the Bucky Report. We are your hosts, Rajiv and Justin, back together on a Saturday because tomorrow is Easter. So we wanted to have a little uh, day before to talk about all things Wisconsin Badgers on today's show. Justin and I have the great Greg Guard debate. Find out where we stand. I think you all pretty much know where we stand, but we're on the opposite <laughs> sides of this. So we're going to get into this. And more importantly, we want your opinion as well. This is going to be a big show for that. Uh, also, a local recruit, a local, local recruit says goodbye to Luke Fickle and hello to PJ Fleck. Uh, what we're at the Bucky Report on Twitter, YouTube, and wherever you can find your podcast. If you like what we're doing, hit the subscribe button so you know when we make new content. Before we get into everything with Gray Guard, uh, for those that watched yesterday, the men's hockey team is out of the NCAA tournament. They lost to Quinnipiac in overtime, very, very sad. They were up 2 1. Quinnipiac came back and got the equalizer and then, um, got it in overtime. They really kind of they, they really took over in overtime, uh, much to our chagrin, but. Um, good, solid first year, right? Mike Hastings, yeah. clearly the direction of the program is going. Now, I'm going to use, I'm going to use that argument in a, in a few minutes, by the way, because he made the tournament. It's a big, it's a very important thing. Uh, Hastings did different what he expectations, had to do. my friend, different right. expectations. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Wisconsin men's hockey still has not won a tournament game in, in several years, uh, but we're in the right direction. I think that's, that's good for the program. Uh, so, you know, more to come hopefully in the future years justin how are you doing this holiday weekend big plans for easter are you watching the tournament today what's going on i'll be watching some basketball tonight i'm really interested in that uconn illinois game i'm curious if offensively illinois can cause some problems for them um as far as the other game clemson alabama we, we all know how ryan feels about nate oats um i don't know how i feel about that game like looking at it alabama's really good offensively like, yeah defensively they have some things that they they need to bring to it and i i don't know if they're necessarily as like talented in terms of guys who can go out there and get their own as some of the other teams but they can cause a lot of problems so that will be a really interesting game clemson beat them earlier in the year yeah i think uh i think clemson kind of is destined that they're, they're playing really good basketball and, I, and i'll tell you i've said this to many people already i think the three best teams in this country right now are UConn, Purdue, and Illinois, especially in this tournament. And I think it's too, it's sad that Illinois has to play UConn because man, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. Illinois is really good. UConn is just on a different level though. I, yeah. I think UConn and Purdue look to be on a collision course, not to mention Purdue's road just got a lot easier given mm-hmm. that Houston is now out of it. So now you're talking about beating um, Tennessee for your, if you're Purdue, then you've got to be NC state or Duke to get to the national title game. Like it's, their, their road is really opened up, and I think that I'm, and I'm happy for them. I'm happy for Purdue. I'm happy for Big Ten teams. I obviously I want yeah, Illinois. To I like seeing us get some teams d- deeper in the tourney. Yeah, I mean the ACC looks like they haven't had a really good tournament. Um, the SEC played a little bit. They have a little bit rough start, but obviously they're doing okay. But the Big East and the ACC look like the class. Uh, so let's hope that we can all flow. Hopefully the Big Ten gets at least one, maybe two teams into the Final Four. Mm-hmm. Um, well, who's not in the Sweet Sixteen is Greg Gard. So you know we know that's happening, but. <laughs> Look, if, if you've been on Twitter, you've been on anywhere, if you're listening to this show, there's a lot of, of fan base split on this. As soon as the season went over, you know, it's like, okay, do we keep guard? Do we let go of guard? We've talked about it throughout the year on this show at various points. And we wanted to kind of have a show where we collectively get give our thoughts and get your thoughts. Because while Chris McIntosh has come out and said that, that Greg Guard will be the coach next season, who know if that's his little AD speech speak or whether that's actually going to happen. But I think it's time that we discuss our points on it, Justin. And it's a big, it's a big deal, right? I mean, the future of this program is kind of hanging in the balance. We haven't, we've had years of sustained success. And then we've had these great guard years where we've been to the tournament several times. We missed the tournament a couple of times. We haven't been as successful as we want, but he's won a lot of games, a lot to kind of dig into. So let's start here before we get into our points about, about what's going to happen. So we're going to go through our kind of positives, negatives. We're going to get a lot of fan comments as well. We've already got some comments starred. Um, 
Justin, give me a grade for Greg Gard this season. You know, looking at everything from the beginning to the middle to the end to the tournament, what is your overall grade? I think it'll help us kind of set up going into what we're doing. I, I think if if I was going to do the college split grade thing, it's C plus B minus. So it's he's kind of in that range where it's like there there are some pluses that you look at over the course of the season. There's also some, some negatives. So, I mean, it wasn't average because obviously we made the tournament, but there's – there's a lot of things there that I think we agree things could have been done better in order for this team to have reached their, their ceiling as a team. I don't think right. we, we achieved that. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a B minus for me, his overall grade this year, because you're right. I mean, look, we were still five seed. We have, we can't forget that it's, it's easy to forget we were a five seed when we did what we did against James Madison, but it's still a point that has to be brought up. Like we, we were still a five seed in the tournament that puts us in a very elite position. You know, like you're talking about a six seed, and an 11 seed, both playing for opportunities to go to the final four. So let's, you know, like we have to keep that in mind. Um, so it's a B minus for me. All right. So let's start with the positives, Justin. I'm going to force you to give me some positives because you know that they're going to come from me and the negatives are definitely going to come from him. For, for the season or for in guard in general? For, 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 for now, we're, we're gray guard, okay. right? Like we're talking about do we want him in or out, right? Like we are, we are now sitting in this room debating this in or out. Let's start with some positives. We're both going to give some positives here. What is the case that you would make? I know this is not the case you are making, but if you had to, what's the case you're making for keeping Greg guard in his position? He runs a clean program. He does not typically get kids that are problematic for the school. He also is not a volatile coach meaning he does not put egg on the the school's face in terms of his actions and what he brings to the school. So that that's pretty much the the basics for him on that. I he's a solid tactician, but I think he's a little stubborn with with in terms of a coach. Um there are things that it, I would change in terms of some of that, but I there are I mean he's definitely not a bad coach. It's just the issues that I have with him are what what is his ceiling and and is he capable of achieving that and i think for me when i think about the positives i think about the floor you know and we've said this many times like i so greg Gard has won 63 percent of his games as head coach um we he basically has missed the tournament twice right he missed tournament 2018 missed tournament last year uh covid year didn't happen of course we would have made the tournament we would have been a higher seed in that in that tournament so who knows what would have happened um, but he's basically missed the tournament twice. Now, there are coaches that have missed the tournament far more than that. There are coaches that have a much lower floor than Greg Gard. And that, Justin, is my biggest issue. I don't want the bottom to fall out. One of the one of basketball's blue blood programs, Indiana, has made eight of the last 18 tournaments. Eight of 18. That's pretty much since they, since the, after the Mike Davis years, which after they took over for Bob Knight, they've had a lot of coaches. They've had Crean, they've had, you know, all these guys, Kelvin Sampson, and they made eight. They should have kept Kelvin. They should have. If he wouldn't have had the recruiting thing, they probably would have. And, and that's the thing. It's like when you, I don't want to be a program that is fighting to get into the NCAA tournament. I know we, we didn't make it last year, but I don't really have a lot of, I don't, I'm not really concerned, Justin, that he's not going to make the tournament. Like this is a this is a team that has a fairly high floor. Now I will say this. One of the reasons that we've had a high floor is defense. And we have not, we did not have that this year. And if you if we do not improve defensively, I think that that's that the bottom will drop out. But I don't see that happening because Greg Gard, let me also tell you this. Like, so coming in out of last season, we had the same debate. And I was saying that I wanted him to stay because I expected to see improvement. And I think I would. And I did. He finished fifth in the Big Ten. He got a five seed. He played well in the Big Ten tournament. So he, there was improvement made in this program. We we also said we needed to get a free tag kind of a recruit. Well, we got him, right? He We also said last year he needs to get an athletic wing in the portal. He got it. What he did not do was strengthen defense, which is now what I'm saying is we need to go back and, and get that defense. Are you worried about the floor dropping out if you make this change that, that you want to make? Because you got to admit the floor is there. It's not that low. I think if you make a shrewd hire and don't look at the flash, and I think this is where a lot of it happens in college basketball. Big programs want the flashy hire. Don't get the flashy hire. Get somebody who's proven that they can consistently win over a period of time. They're all coaches like that are all over the place. 
Now, they may not be as charismatic or as flashy as you'd like, but I think that far too often we see places chase after guys who have one really great season at a middle of the pack power five team. And it's like, Oh, that's the guy let's, let's go get him. Or he's had two years. And I look at that and I'm like, yeah, but that could be, that could be just one good roster that they built that carried over for two years. And when those guys graduate, can they backfill that and consistently keep that? And that's where we kind of end up with this. It's finding the guys who are capable of actually doing that consistently. There are guys all over the place that are capable of doing it. They just might not have the notoriety or they may not be doing it. Even they may be doing it in the Sun Belt. They may be doing it down in Patriot League or wherever, where they're just crushing it at whatever school they're at. Or they may be even down in Division Two or Division Three. Like how many good coaches have we seen come up from those places? Like Bo Ryan. Looking, look at Bo Ryan. Um, <laughs> Auburn's coach. Uh, the guy that some people uh, have said they want several times and we will never hire here um oh, i can't think of his name right now he was yet uw milwaukee for a while um, someone will put it in the chat yeah probably. but he he had some recruiting stuff that was sketchy which is why he will never be here um because we just don't do that but he was down in division two and did some amazing things before getting the, the uw milwaukee job uw milwaukee is kind of notorious for that where they've gotten stung is when they bring in somebody who is from the like a a assistant from somebody at division one when they tend to do that things don't go up bruce pearl yes um he was he was a charismatic coach that kind of had done it down at the lower levels and kind of came up and started doing it at uw milwaukee got them to the sweet 16 and they moved up he was at tennessee and then he moved over to auburn um had some issues at tennessee too so there are guys down there that you can find like there are definitely coaches out there that are very, very good coaches, but a lot of these schools don't want to take chances on it. It's it's the Lance Leipold argument. Nobody wants to give a guy who's absolutely crushing it at another level because what if they're not good? Well, what if you grab the guy who's not good at the power five level that just because he had one good season, you think that he's going to be the dude? We saw this happen with um, Nebraska's last head coach. He was a guy who had one flashy season or a season and a half where he ended up you know, putting it together. And that was why he got the job at Nebraska. Scott Frost basically had that good season at a mid-major, which was a school that I think had recruiting advantages over most of the other teams in that conference. And you look at it and you're like, well, some of these things change. Like I'd rather have the guy who's been doing it for 10 years, you know, maybe yeah, he's, I I agree that if you're going to make that change, good getting someone that, that has those lower level deep experience. Like, I mean, look what Bo Ryan did here. That's amazing, right? I mean, you win at lower levels, you can definitely he turned around up. UW Milwaukee. That was terrible. Right. Before. And the same thing goes for players as well. Like that's why we can go get players from other, other levels. Um, but you know, look, I mean, ultimately for me, I, I don't look at, look at Michigan, look at what their basketball program. They is, want a is flash hire. Right they went for a and, name. And what, well, it's a, a name, but it was a guy that was at their school. I mean, it's it's like, what if what if we went with Krabinoff because people love Krabinoff? I, I, mean, I would be a, if we went with Krabinoff, I'd be furious. And I'm just saying, like that's you, when you make a hire, when you make a change, and you make a hire. Juwan Howard has taken Michigan basketball and put it in the toilet of the Big Ten. They still yeah. beat us. Well, surprise, surprise. But that <laughs> team was horrible. We are not that. We do not have anywhere near that. We finished fifth in the conference. Let me ask you this. You, you agree that there's improvement from last year, right? You you, you agree that we improved from the previous yeah. year. My, my concern what, is oh, to, if to follow what would that. You, is, what would you tell me about recruiting? When I, if I ask you, if I ask you to give me an assessment of whether the recruiting has improved in the last couple of years under Greg Gard, what would you say? I would say that we have to really sit down and look at that because I do think that free tag has a chance to be very good. I'm not as sold on Robeson as as some people are. I think that there's talent there, but I it, I think he's a guy that he's far from a lock. Free tag, I think, is borderline a lock. I think he hit on uh, Blackwell, and I don't know what to make of Winter yet. Like he could Fair go enough. either way Fair still. Enough. And then obviously Gus is a miss because he's gone. Like you you can't call that anything but a miss at this point because you went after a guy who's no longer with your team a year later and never provided anything on the court. So. I think that there's there's still a lot of room for improvement in that regard, and it's not an area of strength for him in general. I think that when I look at him, I have not been happy with some of his 
evaluations with some of the guys that he's gone after. And I think that especially for big men, like when somebody threw out, we saw a tweet, we were talking about it in our chat. When you look at it, how many guys he's missed on in the front court players. It's like, yeah, geez. Yeah. John McNamara tweeted that um, it was great, great tweet. And I, I, I said it to these guys and it's just, it is, it is sad when you look at that and I understand, but I, I, do, I do think that but we had a couple bad recruiting classes there. Okay. And I do think that, that this is, a, we have, we've seen an improvement. Look, he's improving. Okay. If you give me a high floor guy, then I know Dark Ray has a comment here earlier. I was I started, I was going to pull it up, and, and he says, um, Rajiv, the floor is under 500 with guard. We've seen it in 2018. That's unacceptable for Wisconsin. I agree. Under 500 is not an acceptable thing. And if he does that again, he, I sh he should be out. I, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm by no means saying that like, that, that guard has a long leash. Like he has to continue to improve. Yeah. I wanted to see improvement this year. I saw it. So that's why I'm on the side of, I don't want to get rid of him yet because he did improve. We do. We, we, he did hit on Blackwell. We are bringing in free tag. He also hit on the transfer portal last year. He hit with AJ store. And, and while people are upset that he's gone now because we're not going to pony up a lot of money, which we'll get into the bottom line is he's the one, he's the one who brought him in. So I respect the fact that Gray guard did what he needed to do for the program added a piece that he that was necessary and i expect him to add it again so i don't really think we're to the point where we need to go away from him because to me there's still a light at the end of that tunnel of with See, the right players he can advance the tournament now he needs to advance okay that this is this is not it's not an okay thing to just be out in the first round but it is a tournament game it is a one game situation i do you know i value the big 10 season Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me what your sure. argument is for him to go away now. You have very strong feelings about this. Yeah. I want you to tell me why I'm wrong. Number one, I'll start with some of the the portal thing because I like Ryan is a strong proponent of bringing up AJ Store and how he's proven he can do it. And I'm like, you need to look at the ex extenuating circumstances regarding that to an extent when looking at it. This is a guy who grew up roughly an hour away from Madison or something like that. He's Rick Rockford, wasn't he? Illinois. I'm like former top 100 guy. It was, he was somewhere in that area. And I look at it and I'm like, you can't assume there's going to be another top 100 kid who's deciding to get closer to home that you're just going to magically get in the transfer portal, because that's not that simple that that guy's going to be out there. And the top 100 guys, if they don't have that connection are going to be far harder to, to bring in. Um, I look at this in my standpoint when I'm looking at, at guard overall is do I feel like his ceiling is high enough to actually get us to challenge for anything substantial? And to me, I just don't think he's capable of building a roster that's capable of making a deep March run. Um, I look at it like coming out of this, what we're looking at right now, he legitimately probably has to find four guys in the portal because you lost wall, you lost store, and you're going to probably have to, if you if you are serious about this team making having a real chance next year, you're going to need at least two bench guys that you're going to have to bring in. So you have to find those roles have to be filled. I severely question whether he's capable of finding four guys because last year he couldn't find bench guys. And the one guy he did bring in left right away because he found a better situation. He's got to find a way to sell the bench to somebody who's actually going to provide real value. Now, it's possible he could find another Voight. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I think those guys are difficult to find. He's got to find somebody that can fill the, the wall role, which I question is something that he can do because that's not going to be an easy fill. You're going to have to find somebody that ide ideally is more of a true power forward than what Wall was because Wall was kind of more like a hybrid 3-4. Like he had a three level athleticism, but four level of a level uh, four game more so, except for the the shot blocking. And ideally, they need somebody that can add some presence to the paint a little bit on defense. And they, I question whether he's going to be able to sell that truly to somebody. Um, I think so that you're you really with ceiling. Your issue is with ceiling. You don't yeah. think he has he has real ceiling. And because you think his ceiling is what? Like his, his I think his ceiling, is, ceiling is. I think he can sweet get to a sweet 16, and I think that at that level, that's that's kind of where he caps out and doesn't isn't able to get the talent and capable of going beyond that. Because he's going to have to have really strong recruiting in order to be able to do that. And I don't, I don't think he's capable of building a roster. Like if we look at the roster that we had for that 2014-15 team, we had so many 
high level players on that team. He hasn't been able to get more than one at a time. Like we had like four, like we had Bronson, Nigel, Frank, Decker. And now you have, you have effectively store as somebody that can, that probably would have belonged on the floor in that game. And there's, he has his areas that we don't love on him. Like there was some warts on him. Right. So I, I look at it and it's like, I need him to prove that he can give me at least two or three of those guys for us to really truly be able to make a deep run. Now, free take might be one of those guys. Blackwell might grow into one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, because Chucky's going to be gone by the time those guys probably hit that level, he's got to find a way to get a couple other guys the season around them in order to make them really good. And one of them is going to have to be a big. It's going to have to be somebody that you look at is borderline all-conference to pushing for All-American. They don't have to be an All-American, but they have to be a guy that you look at and you go like, yeah, I can make an argument if I look at him in the right way. I mean, the thing about the thing about tourney runs and ceilings, like it's important to me as well. I, the tournament is a really important thing. But look at look at NC State. They're the 11 seed, and they're fighting. They're gonna they're gonna play an, an, uh, a conference rival with a chance to go to the Final Four. Look at Clemson. Like these are teams that that don't necessarily have deeper teams than we do in general. They're not they're not better basketball programs, but anyone can make a run in the tournament when you have the right players and the right mentality, right experience. Which, by the way, we have we have again next year. My biggest issue with guard and when if, when I'm when I'm thinking about moving towards this train of I want him out the the, the bow dragon train if you will bow dragons listen with us today um, it's in game stuff for me it's not really ceiling I don't I don't have an issue with his overall ceiling I think that I've said this before he's got it for me you've got to compete for the Big Ten championship you got to make the NCAA tournament and you have to ha when you have a proper team with good athletes you got to advance and you do need to make waves. His tournament success has not been good enough. There is no doubt about that. We have not been past the first round. Um, we only we've only been past the first round twice, um, and he did it in back to back seasons in his entire tenure, pretty much, other than the Bo Ryan team that he took over. Mm -hmm. So, like you know, that's not good. And I and I definitely understand that. The, the only Sweet Sixteen he went to is basically his season with Bo Ryan, and then the season after that, Bo Ryan's mm -hmm. players. So I, I do understand that. But I to me, it's more in game stuff. It's development of, of youth. It's roster management, as you've talked about many times, and it's it's bench management, right? It's getting players in there properly at the beginning of the seasons to make sure we can have a deep bench. And in-game perspectives, you, that that's just something that I've talked about a lot. His lack of ability to play zone, his lack of um, you know any kind of really ad adaptation. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really like to adapt. He'll go down he with the ship. To, like he right. will flat out refuse to make a change. And this is a problem, but I still think that the system that he plays does it does lend itself to a higher floor than other programs with good defense, which we've had for much of his time. And of course, Bo Ryan's time. So I think that there, there are definitely arguments to be made that he should be fired. And I get that, right? I totally understand why people want him fired. And I, I, I understand that, like that you, you think ceiling, but when I look at programs like Michigan and Indiana, Ohio States, the teams that just like, we never have that team. We never have that team that finishes in the bottom of the Big Ten that is the laughing stock of the conference. We were never that team. And Greg Gard has been here for 10 years, and he's never put us there. Now, yes, we had an under 500 season, and yes, we didn't make the tournament last year, but we lost a lot of close games. I just, we're not that team, and I don't want to be that team. And that's the risk that you take when you are making a change. But in my opinion, when you no longer see a path forward is when you do have to make that change. Clearly, you just don't see a path forward. I, I still don't. do. I still see a path forward because you, you, you're you getting better recruits. You're you're putting yourself in position to actually win games. We're, we, we did it this year. We started out 8-1. and one. You were talking about us being a number two seed. So was I. We were ranked top ten in the country. I mean, like that—that that didn't just disappear. Yes, February happened. I mean, it but did. Greg Gard, but Greg <laughs> Gard did that. Like that—that that, the way we played early, you have to give him credit for that. I feel like you don't want to give him credit for that. Okay, no, I'm giving him credit for that because the the is, the other issue that falls off of that is much like last season. His team started out hot, and then it took a dump halfway through the year, and they they absolutely fell off a cliff and. At some point, you need to look at that and go, why do your teams continue to do this in the second half of the season? You continue to fall below expectations but outperform it to start the season. So is there something there that teams are just figuring you out or what's going on with this that you consistently seem to fall back to the group 
after a strong start. I, I, I partially, one of the things that I have issues with him is that when we talk about the tournament success, well, I do think anyone can make a run. The teams that are truly well built create their own luck. I agree with and you. That's why we're seeing UConn, Illinois, Purdue, and a few others, Tennessee type teams make runs because they can create it based off of how they've been built. And kind of why Duke is always there too. Like you look at it and you're like, you hate that team, but they're typically well constructed. It's normally Duke why they're capable at 11 of seed it. to go to the final four. Are you yeah. kidding me? Duke just yeah. gets, oh, I hate Duke. I, I hate it too. But some of it is there's a reason why a lot of these teams still continuously end up around this area. It's because of the way they're built. And it's one of the issues that I see looking at it is I, I question whether, and there, this might be the year he bottoms out. Like I think that there is a, there's a chance here if he can't fill this team, like I know of Fiddler and some of the other guys that we're talking about potentially that could come in. Well, what if somebody makes a strong offer to him? Like we're putting a lot on Chucky here to be the guy that's the reason why he comes. But if somebody offers him 600K or something like that, and we look at it and it's like, okay, what are you going to do now? Like there's an opportunity here where you can't just throw money at players to try and build a roster. Some of it has to be you recruiting them and proving that you deserve it. And at some point we're, we're kind of seeing here where it seems like play, like players seem to get a little fed up with guard over the course of time. Like it, yeah, it's, it's, he rubs, he definitely is a, a guy who can rub players the wrong way. And we're seeing that kind of with guys leaving in the portal now a little bit. Some of the walk-ons leaving, like it's, why the, those guys probably aren't going to be playing anywhere else really like they're putting film out there to hopefully walk on somewhere else for the most part right uh let's get some comments in here from the community will hannah uh starts this off i don't think guard is the man if you want to go to the next level i question his player rotations in-game adjustments play design at the end of halves and overall acquisition skills i mean this is a very good point will i think that that's you know definitely in-game adjustments and plays at the end of halves is something that i've talked about a ton it is mind-numbingly frustrating to see how we play in certain situations um but i'm just not quite ready to to take that that does that put me over the line yet david thering says not 100 for guard coming back another season but can understand why this season for me is it with as of this writing seven seniors coming back second weekend minimum or bus no no more excuses be all in i kind of agree with this i i do think that once again, we're going to have an experienced team, and Chucky has to stay for, for us to have this experienced mm. team. But that, I mean, we do, we cannot be in this first round exit nonsense again. And when All I right. say improvement, I talk about that every year. Well, improvement is we can't have that again next year. Otherwise, yeah. I'm going to be singing a different tune because as much as some people in the fan base or even across college basketball like to think, well, the tournament doesn't really, should it matter as much because it's one game? It does matter because that's what the sport is. The sport is about the tournament. It's, it's, I love the regular season. I love the regular season, big 10. That's important to me. It's not important to everyone really fall. The March is a big thing, but I get it. Dark Ray says the basketball program is on the verge of complete rock bottom because guards stayed too long. We might not even get to 10 wins next season. Guard needs to be fired now. Dark. I mean, Justin Dark Ray is with you on this one. Um, you, do you really think we're, we're to the point where he could go rock bottom? You, you mentioned that already. You, I don't see that. I don't see why. I, why I think if they can't get an athlete, if they can't get an athlete, I question. You know, Store helped cover up some things with this team. Like he was a guy, and I I realize he wasn't perfect all the time, but he did. He was capable of creating some things that weren't there off the dribble, that we didn't have anybody else that could. And I think that you fall back to kind of the NIT season a little bit in terms of offensive ability if if you don't start getting some athletes out there. He has to find a way to get some athletes in this offseason. If he doesn't, and we just become a grit team, it's going to be a really rough road next year. Because but he did get more athletes this season. He did that. Like we wanted that, and he did that. You know, okay. Blackwell he, he brings up like, but that guy's leaving. Like, so now you're he's gone again. He's got to find a way to do not, that. But is that really on Greg Guard? Like, we're not going to pony up a million dollars to keep AJ Store. How that's, is that Guard's that's fault? fair? But I'm saying he's got to do it again now. If he doesn't do it, then this team has a there's a chance that they fall back. You but lost he, Wall. The, like people are under underselling how valuable Wall was. Like you're just gonna have to be somebody that gets you like 11 and six or whatever he was this last year and play solid defense. 
Yeah, I mean, he that's has to reload. He he has to reload. But the thing is, my point is, he has been doing that. He did that this year. He did like, it one year. Okay, but it's the one year since we've been talking. So I feel like he, okay. he improved. Here he is. Like I, I just I, I don't the, the like st- I think too much is being made of store leaving and uh, on on guard. That's not on guard in my opinion. Like we're not a basketball blue blood team. We don't have the money that that like basketball programs like Duke I, and Illinois and North Carolina have. We don't have that. Part of that is all. because of who the coach is. I don't think that's true. I think we're not we're not a big we're not like. Do you think if Bo Ryan was here, we'd just be ponying up a million dollars for someone? I like, think that in, I think the people that actually pony up money for that probably would be more likely to do it if it was Bo Ryan. I don't. I, mean, I think there's definitely people that are lukewarm on guard and look at it, be like, why am I giving this guy handfuls of cash when the players that he's going to bring in, like they're not worth that kind of money. Like it's going to end up being thrown. Money's going to get thrown at guys that don't deserve it. And that's kind of how I feel about it. That's with and I all that's just what it is. Yeah. I want bang for my buck. Like I want return on investment. And I don't want to just be like, well, these guys are the starters, so they're the ones we're gonna give money to. NIL is a world that that obviously is new and we've we've got to navigate it. Uh, Zach Bart says, with guard, we're in basketball purgatory. Not bad enough to make a program altering decision to move on from him, not good enough to win at the level we expect to win at either. I feel like you agree with this comment, Justin. I most definitely do. Yeah, it's 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 a tough spot. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Great. Zach goes on to say, and let's talk about this for a second. Did Mac ever make his expectations clear with guard? With football, the expectations are to win championships, and he made that clear. With guard, it's he's the best leader of our team of our team now mentality. What are your thoughts on this comment? Justin? I don't know if there ha- if previously he sat him down and said that we expect more than this, but there's a potential that it could happen this offseason. I really would like to know what the what the actual view of him is from a inside the '80s office, because I I don't know. But I my concern is is that I had the same concerns under Paul Christ that the old guard kind of looked at everything and was like, ah, this is fine, but we're gonna get to our eight wins and that's good enough. And I don't want that mentality. I'm I'm of the mentality that if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. I would agree with you there. I, I think that, <clears throat> so my take on this, Zach, and I think for, first of all, I think Chris McIntosh is setting expectations across the entire athletic department, not just football. Um, <clears throat> I think he's treating both the same way. He's changing the culture of everything. Now, yes, he recognized what we all recognize. Paul Christ wasn't the guy to lead the program. We were going backwards with Paul Christ. That's my biggest difference between the Chris guard thing. Chris was going yeah. backwards. I don't think guard is going backwards at this point. From that Bo Ryan? Me, well, from I where, mean, from, 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 from Paul Chris, from where he was like, you know, at, think of just Paul Chris peak. He was, I mean, even from, he was taking even the from into the dumps, but even, even if we're looking at it from the same process or same view of guard, he went to the sweet 16 a couple of times in his first few years and hasn't been back. And now he's, starting to have opportunities where he's not even making the tournament. That's true. He has missed it twice. I agree with that. And like, and I want to be really clear on one thing. If this becomes a, we missed the tournament again. Uh, no, he, he can't miss the tournament. You don't miss the tournament. Well, at he, he will, he will be fired. This next year. The tournament the tournament. I'll be shocked I, if we keep him. I do not tolerate that. I, I don't, I don't like last year was, it was, it was something that I was like, okay, we can't let that happen again. And I, and I stand by that. We cannot let that happen again. This has to be a program that is consistently competing at the upper upper echelons of the Big Ten. And I think that is that is why, and I think he can't. So so my point again on, on McIntosh is that I think he does see that, that, that light. And I don't think he's just, I'm not going to worry about, I'm not going to worry about it because we're okay. I think he's looking at the numbers. I think he can see what, 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 we're seeing and what a lot of fans are seeing, which are he is improving. We do we we did get an athletic wing that we wanted. We did get Blackwell's a, a hit. We are bringing in free tag. We have to do well in the portal again, like you mentioned. And I think McIntosh has the confidence that guard's going to do that. He's going to get back into the portal and do that. He sees the light at the end of the tunnel. But I do believe that if McIntosh feels that guard is taking the program and really pulling it in reverse, which is what Chris was doing with the football program. I think he pulls the trigger and I'm not saying it's even though he's come out and said, you know, he's going to stick around. You're right. I mean, he could, that conversation could still be happening and he could still make that change this off season. I don't think it's going to happen because he did make the tournament. We are, we were a five seed. Oh, it's not happening this off season. I'm, right. I'm aware enough to, to look at that and say, he'll give him another opportunity. I just question whether 
guard is going to be able to put together a roster capable of of being more than mediocre in the Big Ten this next year. It's, and it's a fair criticism. Greg Linscom says, what would be the buyout for firing guard? I believe it's $12 million, um, Greg. The way, I think there's two ways to look at this. If it is 12, there is, if it's 2028 is the earliest that it, it potentially changes, I think you have to look at it from the standpoint of, if listen, if we're, if, if we're stuck with this and we're not happy with the results, just pony up and be done with it and start trying to move forward. Or you have the people who are going to say, well, let's just see if he can figure out a way to improve this. I'm, I'm of the mindset of the other, the, just, I, if I'm not one for wasting time, like if you don't feel something's working, then move on. That's just my perspective on it. And that's kind of the way I look at it. We've got somebody saying Iowa state steals players from Wisconsin. How <laughs> Zach Bart says guard may not be falling out of the sky, but he's not moving forward either. He's stuck in the mud with mediocrity. If it's championship level expectations across the board guard, isn't it? So I'm going to push back a little bit on this, Zach. I, I think that like, it's a fair point. I understand your point about like, you know, the mediocrity, but I, I do believe that guard like does possess the ability to take this team to, to, to new heights. Now, is it going to be Bo Ryan heights? No, but I think that he can be a guy that can make the final four. I don't think sweet 16 is his ceiling. I said before, I think final four is his ceiling. I think, and that's okay with me. If you get a guy who's a final, who, who can, who can make it happen, but I have moved a, a lot further towards your side of the boat, by the way, um, Justin, I have, I have moved there because of what I mentioned, the tournament lack of success, the in game decisions. But so for me, it's a very short rope. The rope is if you miss the tournament, you're out. If you don't show improvement, you're out because then we do need to make that change. But if he shows another season of improvement, which means now we're finishing fourth, maybe third in the big 10, we get out of the first round, we're another top five C like we're seeing we're, we're playing better defense. Then I'm still going to be on the side of, okay, well he can still push us forward, but I, the leash is short for me. The leash is very, very short for me, but I definitely am still of the side of why are we taking, why are we cutting a guy that got us a five seed in the NCAA tournament that was, that was eight and one I, in the conference that did finish a fifth in the league like that. It's, you, it's a really hard case to just say, well, that's just not good. Listen, enough. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dive down that rabbit hole because I don't agree with that seating. And I, I've said that since they got it, that I didn't think they deserved it. I don't think that the second half of the season proved that they were deserving of that type of seating. When you go three and eight or whatever it was at the the point, I just look at it and I'm like, I don't know what you're putting them there based off of. They're not playing good basketball. Now they ended up playing a little bit better in the, the Big Ten tournament, but the problem with an issue that this team had the whole year was they would have they were completely dependent upon their shooting. If they had a game that they shot well, they'd win. They got hot for three games in the, the Big Ten tournament and then they promptly fell apart when somebody they also had an issue that well he'll have to figure out a way to to fix this next year rectify which is it's clear his teams cannot handle pressure right now this this roster that they have right now this roster cannot, cannot handle a team that gets into them defensively and the book is out on that they're going to if teams are smart next year they will attack them every game that way defensively and just say we're going to get into them and if we end up giving up some points so be it but from what we've seen they struggle with pressure and they tend to turn the ball over and get sloppy and start playing too fast and force shots and that could be like unless they figure out a way to find somebody who's capable of breaking that i don't know how this team gets substantially better with that book being out because i think chucky kind of showed his colors on that a little bit he does not like people getting into him and i don't know if they really have anybody else that's capable of being a guy to initiate offense that that's better with it Maybe Blackwell gets a little bit better with it coming into this next year, but they need to practice against that in the off season heavily. Yeah. And if that means everybody just coming screaming at your players in practice and making them feel uncomfortable, then they have to do it, but they have to find a way to get better at it. Yeah. Uh, two comments. I want to get to questions. Uh, Dark Ray says, Rajiv, if guard doesn't replace wall and store this off season and the team struggles next year, do you think he should be fired or will you give him another year to get a better team? No, I, I think he should be fired because this is the world we live in. I've said it before. I'll say it again. He needs constant improvement. His leash is not long. If his, if his leash was long and he's built up a lot of capital in the bank, then I would say he can have a bad year, which is kind of where I was last year. I felt like he was okay to have that. 
But no, I don't think he can have a bad year. Bad year to me means you missed the tournament. You're out. He misses the tournament. I'm telling you right now. I will not come on this show next year and say he should stay if he misses the NCAA tournament. It is an unacceptable thing to happen at this at this university, 1,000%. Is it Stephen Ke- Keel, I think? Yeah, Keel. Maybe Probably. Wisconsin thinks there's something they're not. That might This might be who they are. I'd say you have a 20 year track record under Bo Ryan or or, 15, or 17 years or whatever that proves that their ceiling is higher than this. If you have the right coach in place, and I, and I don't even think that Bo Ryan necessarily recruited at an amazing level when he was here. He just found pieces that worked well together. But there's they're capable of putting somebody like Wisconsin. We've made a lot of excuses from a recruiting standpoint. We kind of see that with the, the the Luke Fickle with the football team. Oh, we can't do this. We can't get over 50% or we can't recruit at the level. Well, then last year we have roughly half our players coming in at the blue chip level. So I think that that's possible with basketball too. I think Wisconsin is capable with the right coach in place of having a guy who can bring in multiple four stars every season. I'm not saying you're going to get top 50 guys, but I think he's capable of bringing in top – this is a school that's definitely with their historical success – of bringing in top 100 guys every class. You need to play a variety of basketball that people like, and you need to have a coach that's charismatic and a good recruiter. Uh, thanks all for listening live. I'd love to get all your comments in here as well. John Burns says, Rajiv, come off it. The five seeding was way too high. Justin, I know, agrees with that. I think they should Back to what Guard is doing and not. How about getting a five-year Tyler Wall to develop an outside shot? Not happening. So John brings up a good point, development. Let's talk about player development a little bit. That is something that has been a problem. And I think, John, you're, you're right. Like um, That was a hallmark of Bo Ryan. It was the ability to take players that were, you know, typical three-star guys and develop them into great athletes. I mean, re- and especially the big development. That That is something that I am concerned about. I, I, it's not like I don't have concerns, John, or any. I, I have plenty of concerns about Greg Gard. I'm just more concerned about what happens if you, if you, drop the floor out and you make a bad hire and then your program's in the dump for the next five, seven years. That's what I'm worried about. But I do want to, he, he has issues because the front court development has been a problem, right? We have not had the bigs and we need to have bigs. If you're going to play our system, if you're going to do what we're going to do, we need to have that. And in college basketball, you need that. So development has been an issue. And I think it's been an issue for you as well, Justin, like we're not seeing the development happen year in and year out and guys really taking big leaps like like crowd didn't crowd got a little better but not 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 the big leaps that we were expecting part of that is also i don't see them recruiting guys at the center position going forward that i think are going to be difference makers listen we have a couple of guys and i don't hate the type of players that they are but no offense i i don't think the couple of guys that they're going after in 25 are going to be guys that are going to really move the needle either you're not finding another frank kaminsky like he, you're not going to get that diamond in the rough guy again. You're going to have to get that. You're going to have to get a premium player. That's going to have that type of level of ceiling. And that can be a guy who's athletic that maybe needs some, some de- body development that you do. He refuses to take kind of the, the flyer on guys that are bigs that have some athleticism that you get maybe some rebounding and defense and hope that you can develop some offensive game. We need to have a guy like that on the roster. I'm not saying that's the only center you have, but you need to have a guy that can go out there and give you 20 minutes and be a guy that can be good defensively and and be capable of disruption in the paint because we haven't had somebody like that in a while. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get through a few more comments here. Then I want your final take, Justin, on, on give me a one final sentence as to why he needs to go, and I'll do the same for why he should stay. And then we're going to get into some transfer portal stuff. Uh, in regards to basketball, we're going to talk about a little bit of where we need to go. And then, of course, football as well uh greg linscombe says and i want you to i want i want to give this over to you justin are we putting too much emphasis on a bad loss in the ncaa how many players were hurt i mean tyler wall was not healthy in that game um we've had issues with that in the past the year that johnny davis was in there we had issues there like are are we putting too much emphasis on the bad loss do you think i mean it's it is one game i realistically if you recall was kind of out on guard after last season i I gave them i gave him a reprieve coming into this year when they started off hot thinking that maybe they found a way to, to figure things, some, some things out. And then we promptly had the second half slide that kind of made me be like, all right, well, this is the same thing we kind of went through last year. So it's not a one year thing for me to be clear on this. That's, that's kind of the, why I'm so frustrated with this is it's, it feels like I'm consistently seeing I'm in groundhog day a little bit every season 
where yes, there was some improvement, but it was marginal improvement from the, the year prior. Marginal? I, we, we were out I mean, of the prior to the NCAA tournament, what were, what, we were, what were we were what were we seeded? We also beat Purdue the week before the tournament started. And they're one of the best teams in America. Like these things matter. They you you have to count. Not, them. Not I mean, yeah. Did you think Purdue gave a crap about the Big Ten tournament necessarily? They were sad. I think for it. I don't think they wanted us to beat them that day. I, I don't think they, they wanted them. to lose the game, but I don't think they particularly cared as much about it. They're more concerned about the turn getting into the tournament healthy. So yeah, they probably wanted to win that game, and I'm sure they played hard. But it, to them, I think they it wasn't do or die for them. Like they're like we're one seed no matter what. Wisconsin, it was we have to to do this to kind of get us, you know, improve where we can what our road is going to be. Yeah. All right. Give me one final um take as far as like you know, you're, you gotta sell me. You've got one minute to sell me on why he's gone. What what is your biggest point as to why this man no longer needs to be the coach of this university? Oh, it's simple. I want to get back to what we've proven the ceiling is for this program, which is to get back to being under a previous coach, we never went more than three years without a sweet 16 getting to a point where we consistently were able to grab top 100 players or four stars, at least regularly with our, our recruiting. And it seems like we're kind of just looking at this from the standpoint of like, these players are good enough. I think if you look at the, there's a dramatic difference between what Bo Ryan was recruiting and what, what Greg Gerard's recruiting. And I think that we're capable of more. And I think that we can get somebody and that is capable of bringing a higher level of talent, which gives you more opportunity for success. You may have somebody that maybe isn't necessarily quite as good of a, a day-to-day coach, but if you're bringing in more talent, it gives you a higher ceiling. So the way I look at it is I just don't know if he's capable of getting dynamic enough players in here for us to really achieve what we want to. And that's where my frustration lies with this. I think and you I need think to start he- – I think he is capable of doing those things. And 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 I'll and I'll say this again is a short leash for me. Okay. I'm not like yay guard, pro guard forever. Like I'm upset with a lot of the th- decisions that guard made. But I also know that he's won 63% of his games. He is in the upper echelon of Big Ten coaches with fastest to 100 wins. He is successfully finished in the top half of the conference. He successfully made the tournament. Yes, he's missed it twice. No doubt about that. No, no. And Bo Ryan never missed it. So it's not an excuse. Like it's not okay. If he misses it again, I'm I'm telling you he's gone. I've said that and I'll say it again, but the guy's floor is fairly high. And I do think I am seeing improvements from a recruiting perspective. I think the Blackwell winter free tech, those are big wins for me. And he's his ability to adapt. I, I don't the think we know that with, with winter, store. Yeah. Fair, fair point, fair point. But at least my opinion store was a hit in the transfer portal. I think he does that again. He's going to fill gaps. I think, I think McIntosh sat down with him, gave him expectations. And I think he's, he's, now trying to build that and get and, and McIntosh is going to give him a chance to show him what he can do. He needed to be adaptable and address concerns with the team holes within the team, like an athletic wing. I think he did that. So I expect that to happen again. I do want him to stay. I do not want to go to another coach. That's going to take the bottom out of this program. And I, I don't want I, I to have think a situation that that's, where we're, that, that's we're really scared. You know, it is. I, I, think and, you, I think you can, if that's the way you're going to do anything and whether it be in business or anything else, if that's the way you're doing it, you can't do that. Like you have to be willing to be, you can't be afraid to fail. You'll never be successful if you're afraid to fail. But I still, but the difference is Justin, I still see a light at the end of the tunnel. I still think he I can don't. be successful. And that, and that, and that ultimately is where this difference lies, which is fair. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's where the fan base is. And we love the disagreements. It's, it's, and look, there's been plenty of people, by the way, disagreeing with me and agreeing with you. And I totally get that. I understand I'm in, I'm in the minority. I don't know. We should, so we should do a poll. I'm not sure where the fan base splits percentage wise on this, but I, I just feel like I do see a light. Recruiting has to continue to improve. In game stuff needs to be better. That's my only, that's my biggest concern with him is that that will never stuff. change. But I, I We're think never going to okay. see I zone. just don't think we need to, to cut him loose right now. Um, but you know, it, it, and that's the thing. That's the best part I'm, about I'm this fine with letting it play out one one more year. And if if he ends up flubbing this, then I will say I told you yeah. so. Oh, that's that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. So the question now is what do we do about it? Right. So, like um, let's talk about some players real quick before we move on to football. Um, AJ Store gone, Gus Yaldin gone, Connor CG gone, a couple of walk-ons gone. Obviously, Wall gone. He's out of Wall field. Wall's gone, of course. Um, the biggest surprise for me is Gus. I, I really, I really am shocked by that one because store leaving doesn't really surprise me. I mean, obviously it's NIL money. He's going to command our money and I do not 
do not want us to pony up a million dollars to keep AJ Store because, frankly, I thought part of his game annoyed me at certain times. So I'm okay with that. Gus Yaldin was a guy there was potential. He was that kid. He was going to be like that wall replacement at four who also could spread the floor a little more. And now with him being gone, it really does make the portal an absolute must. You have to get bigs. Yeah. You really need a five. See, you need a four. You need another athletic wing. You maybe even one or two. Like, what do you think we need to go after to to fill sure. this? I mean, well, are well, you concerned with the Gus thing? First off, based off the Gus thing, it doesn't surprise me because we saw how Connor was treated. And so I look at it from the standpoint of if his perspective on Connor was to just flat out, you know, place him at the end of the bench and just forget about him. Based off the some of the things that happened with Gus, it would not shock me if that was similar in that regard, where it's I've my opinion on you has changed and now you're just kind of dead to me. And if that's the case, then I don't blame him for looking somewhere else. Like he, if you're not, if he doesn't see value in whatever you are, and we've seen this, I mean, it, it happens in football. It happens, whatever. We see a guy who we think has promise and whatever happens, it might be, you know, Nick Evers would be a prime example of it when it comes to football. He got in the doghouse early and we never saw, we never heard from him again. Well, it's possible that that may, that's just what he is now with, with the coaching staff based off of one mistake. And I worry that that's kind of what happened with Gus. I don't know that for sure. But based off of what happened with Connor a little bit, it, it would not surprise me if his perspective on him changed and it's just, okay, I'm not going to yeah. push you out, but you're also probably not getting the opportunity. I'm not as open-minded as I necessarily should be to move forward with this. I wish right. I knew more about the guest yeah. situation. I think that, you know, like obviously he had some, he had the mental stuff, not mental, but like he had some is disciplinary issues. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry. Um, early on. Uh, we don't know all the details with that. <clears throat> he left we'll the team for a little stuff, while. But I, and I don't want to elaborate or, or right. go into depth on it. Cause we, right. Just of course. So we're not, we're, yeah, we have other, well, we're not going to go into that, but I feel like, I just wanted to see what he could do. And I'm disappointed mm -hmm. because we were really high on him in the, in the winter sort of Yalden combo. Yalden being so physical, you know, could have really provided that, that a little bit more of that inside depth that we needed. So that is a concern of mine for sure. Um, some one of the players that, that's getting some, that's getting a look at a lot of Badger fans are talking about is Frankie Fiddler, uh, six, seven <clears throat> forward out of Omaha. Um, I really like this guy's film, by the way. Um, I Ryan Ryan kind of brought it up, to, brought him up to me, and and he said he kind of liked the film. And I I took a look at it, and I agree. I really like his ability. He's kind of like he's he's a do it all kind of a player. He can handle the ball well. He can shoot the ball well. He shoots thirty five percent from three, forty five percent from the field last year. Averaged twenty points a game, six rebounds, three assists. But what stuck out to me, Justin, is his ability to create his own shot a little bit. <clears throat> He kind of reminds me of like a Marcus Damas from Illinois in that he can back down a guy. He's confident with the ball. He can, he has really good body control and he can fade away. He can shoot on the run. He's a guy that can do a little bit more and he can pass really well. So I feel like he's not a star. We're not coming in to make him a star. We're just coming in to fill a gap, right? We have a gap at four. We've got a gap at three as well with store. So, I mean, he, he's kind of that three, four guy. And I feel like he adds a little bit of scoring prowess. <clears throat> defense i haven't really seen too much on his defense i couldn't really get, uh, you know get too much out of that so that's a concern but i kind of like him and i think he seems like one of the likely guys we're going to go after what are your thoughts well they're definitely going after i mean he's visiting this weekend i, I look at it from this standpoint of like i said earlier he, he's a piece they need they realistically need four guys you need two guys because you're gonna have to replace store wall as your two starters and yep. then you're going to have to come through and pick up probably two guys that are legit bench pieces. Like you need guys you can actually play on the bench in order if this team truly wants to be successful because we're way too thin. And one of them has to be a center. So you're probably looking at center center and forward are two positions. Like I think guards at the guard position, oh man, that's even tough too because with Connor gone now, that's another spot. And not that he was used very heavily, but yeah, we probably need four to five. Guys, I don't work. know that we need a guard though. I mean, you, you really think we need, I mean, we still have Miss. We, well, we've got there's possibility that Blackwell Chuck gets moved into Chucky, the starting lineup, right? Like, I mean, Chucky, he could be the guy Blackwell, that plays at the three, right? We've got Chucky, we've got Blackwell, we've got McGee. I mean, you know, we've we've we there, there are people back there from, from a guard perspective. We have Klesman, of course. I think three, four, Depends five, on is how much you area. think you're going to get from uh, 
free tag coming in. Right. He's more of a combo. Yeah. Like he's a he's going to be a point guard, shooting guard, backup. I mean, so you're looking at five guys right there that that with, with including free tag that are playing at the one and two. So I think yeah, I think which is why Fiddler I think with that three four kind of combo guard, the combo forward. I feel like that is a good guy for that place. But you've got to go big. Rim protector clearly is an area that we need. Um, any other comments on basketball before we move on to talk a little bit about Luke Fickle and his boys? No, I mean, it's going to be, we haven't heard most of these, like there's going to be a lot that's happening on with it, with who's all hitting the portal here shortly for basketball. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but there, there's definitely going to be some spots that need to be refilled here. So it will yeah. be, we'll be busy this portal season. Justin, a uh, a local guy from Middleton, Wisconsin, Torin Petaway, defensive line, um, decided to decommit from Wisconsin and go to play and for one PJ minute later. Fleck. <laughs> and to PJ Fleck. So PJ Fleck, negative recruiting. Seriously, stop it. Okay. Like, th- let's not talk about that again because yeah. you clearly do it. So uh, that happens. What are your thoughts on lose, losing Torn Petaway? Who was a guy that we were excited about? Um, a lot of upside there, which I think obviously other schools have seen. I am really surprised that this guy's from Middleton and he's leaving Wisconsin to go to Minnesota. Do you think it's a depth thing? Do you feel like he thinks there's more playing time situation up there? Maybe it's an early on situation. What are your thoughts on losing him to Minnesota? I honestly don't know. And I was talking in the discord about this, you know, earlier that I look at it and I, he wasn't pushed out. I'm going to say that right now. I, I don't think the staff knew anything about what was happening with this my gut instinct on this. And it's possible that they, I don't know how strongly they feel about him one way or the other. Here's my perspective on him. And I made it one clear when, when we took him, I was surprised we took him that early. I figured to me, looking at him there, he was, he was a lot of guy more potential than a guy that had kind of realized or was ready to really play. And if he was not from, Wisconsin, I don't know if we take that commitment at that point in time because I kind of look at him like a guy that that has a lot of developing to do yet, and he probably is going to take two years to be ready to play at Wisconsin if he would have come here. So for me, it was there are guys out there that I think are more ready to play, and I said this flat out in the Discord, I, I would rather have Brad Fitzgibbon over him every day of the week. I think that that's a guy that is probably one year development and is ready to play. I think he needs to probably get his body to where you need him, and then he's, he can give you snaps. Uh, Petaway, from a technique standpoint, and so much, has so much work that he needs to do yet that I think there's a lot there. And I think that Fitzgibbon is far more advanced in terms of like understanding of how to pass rush and shoot gaps and do some of the things that Petaway is still learning how to do. Um, so I looked at it from the standpoint of <clears> – <throat> I think there was upside with him for sure. And anyone that says that he wasn't that good, whatever. I think that there, there were legitimate concerns about him, about whether he was a guy that was going to be, had a super high ceiling here. If anyone thought that he was going to be a superstar here, I just don't, I didn't see that. I thought he was a guy who could be a nice rotational piece, probably a little bit better version of JTJ. And which is fine. That's a guy that you can win with. But I think that looking at this, it hurts because he's an in-state guy, but I'm not broken up over the fact that we lost somebody who lost him as a player. It's still a position that we really need to fill though. It is. I mean, that, that's the, you know, whether it's Fitzgibbon or whether it's someone else, like I agree with that. You know, I, I really, <clears throat> for me, it's the loss of the position, like losing a D yeah. lineman. It's not something that we can afford. Cause we need to build this position up. It, when, when, when you lose a guy to Minnesota, I'm almost, I almost kind of think, do we, do we really want him anyway? Like if you're really going to go play for Minnesota and not play for Wisconsin, it means you're probably you maybe just weren't good enough. I don't know. Maybe maybe we maybe we keep recruiting him and we flip him back at some point. But I think more so than anything else, we still it's a position that we really desperately need to hit on. And we that's a lot that's of guys, really the by the way. Concern. They they have offers out. And I think do. part of this needs to be looked at. Maybe Whitlow came in and didn't absolutely love him. That that's always a possibility. I mean that's a good point. Or that they just didn't connect. Like if the kid didn't like the coach. Honestly, the way I look at that is good. Then 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 move on. You're doing what's right for you, kid. That's fine. I don't want you to come to Wisconsin just because you're a Wisconsin kid and that's you feel like you have to. You have to be willing to work under that coach and, and you you two have to be on the same page. Because if you're not, then you're a wasted scholarship. Yeah. 
defense <clears throat> is something that I, you know, I said it with basketball and I said the same thing with football at, at both of our programs, football and basketball, we've had high floors for quite a while. And I think the reason that, for that is defense, right? Our mm -hmm. defense at both, both sides, both basketball and football have always, always been something that to be proud of. And last year kind of took a bit of a step back at both. And I think that's why I'm so focused on the defensive side of this, this recruiting class because, and, and from a linebacker perspective, we've done it in the portal. We've done it with this draft, with this um, class already, but it's got to be a focus moving forward because we we need to shore up our defense, especially you know moving forward because that's in a new Big Ten, in a Big Ten that has a ton of great talent every single week, we've got to shore that up. Mm -hmm. Overall 2025 class, <clears throat> how do you feel about it so far? What are some, obviously, you know, D-line we've already talked about. Are there any other positions where you're like, we really need to push in this direction to improve this 25 class. Well, I mean, we're really, we're really early in the class. Yeah. Um, I, I actually really like the guys that they've been in on and gotten, like I've seen people kind of complaining about the ratings on these kids. And I'm like, I've, I've watched the film on pretty much everyone that's committed. I understand why we accepted the commitment. I understand why we made the offer to them. They've hit on some really good guys. There are guys, there are multiple guys in this group right now that I think will end up at, as four stars by the time all said and done. That said, there's definitely some positions that they need to do. They're they're in on some really good defensive linemen that I think are guys that are a step below the blue blood guys that are also still really highly thought of guys. Uh, Gordy Selfstead is one of them. I, I really like his film. I think he has a chance to be a great player. He's athletic. He has a really high motor. He has the length and size that we want for a five tech here. And I think that that guy can be in long term has a, a ton of upside as a defensive lineman, Wisconsin needs to get a guy like that in the room. Like we, we don't have a lot of guys with length and athleticism at that position that have burst that can go out there and really provide something. And that's something they they very much so need. Yep. Um, yeah. Especially in the trestle system, you got to have that burst. Um, <clears throat> when does, when does spring practice pick up again? Do you have the deal? I date? believe it's this week. So, okay, some good. Point so next week we'll hopefully have more spring practice to talk about like, um, April there, third or something like that. Yeah, I can, we can, Justin and I can commit something to you at this point. We are not having another show between now and the fall that doesn't talk, talk about football at some point yeah. because football is oh, on the sure. brains now. Yeah. And we've Once got a lot of practice actually picks up and we have mm. things to talk about on a daily oh, basis. Yeah. We'll definitely dive into it. Spring football is going to be huge for us. Obviously, Justin and I are big spring football fans. We're going to be excited about that. Any final thoughts, Justin at all coming out of this week? One quick question did come up in the comments I wanted to address. Um, the scholarships available. It is four scholarships um, that we have in two walk-ons. Yeah. Um, so that there, there is there is ability to add to the portal for that. Mm -hmm. That needs to happen. But Justin, final thoughts at all this week? No, I'm ready to get back to football. <laughs> let's let's hit this up. I want to start hearing some things. I want to hear some. It's like baseball. Baseball is just starting up now. I'm, I'm I love when the young players kind of come up from the minor leagues and you start getting guys that. Because it gives you that that sense of like there's there's it's renewed and there's opportunity there and you don't know quite what it's going to be. It's kind of what we see with spring football. We have these guys that we've been talking about that have been recruited. They're coming in, the young guys. You have players that you're expecting to take a step. You're, you're hoping to hear new things about. That's what's so much fun about spring football. Like we get yeah. to hear so much of like about potential and what guys are showing and some of the things that we we get to look forward to potentially greatness in the fall. While we wrap up this basketball season, we do have a lot to look forward to from a football perspective. Well, you know, Justin's side of the argument is pretty clear. He wants Greg Gard out. My side of the argument is I got a short leash, but I do think he still provides us the best option at the present time. Not best option. I shouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. A safer option than going down a, ra a route mm -hmm. and a potential rabbit hole of a lot of losses, i.e. look at other teams that, that have mm -hmm. done that in the past. Um, thanks for listening, guys. With that, we'll be back next weekend to talk again. More spring football, spring practice, and all things heading into the fall. With that, thanks for listening. And on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Bucky Report or The Bucky Report Podcast from wherever you get your content. Until next time, on Wisconsin. Wisconsin.